Welcome to the analysis, design, and simulation of a flyback part 5. In the last uh, part 4, let me scroll up. Okay, uh, I talked about the uh, parasitics in a transformer and uh, the main parasitic uh, that affected the operation of the flyback is the leakage inductance and define what leakage inductance basically is uh, winding that doesn't get coupled so you have uh, inefficiencies and it causes a spike in the MOSFET and I also show how to measure uh, the leakage inductance by taking a uh, inductance readings of the primary with the secondary open and then you short the secondary you measure the short circuit uh, impedance and then there's this uh, formula that you plug in basically let's see you plug in uh, LK which is the leakage inductance or the short circuit and the primary inductance and you can calculate your K once you have your K you can use that number in this case uh, it would be 0.99833 that's the number that I used in the simulation so you can use the uh, the coupled inductor model and use that spice parameter okay and uh, also showed how the ringing is caused by these two the leakage inductance that is not coupled and the capacitance of the MOSFET I also showed how to reduce or snub uh, the ringing by putting a snubber which is this here this is the snubber right there okay so now in this part we're gonna go ahead and uh, deal a little bit more with uh, uh, parasitics okay and up to now we have assumed that the parts are ideal and uh, we have made other assumptions uh, the first assumption that we have made is that the efficiency is a hundred percent so that's that one and then the other uh, assumption that we have made is that the duty cycle is going to be 0 0.5 okay so let's examine these two a little bit Okay. Now, the reason that I was using these two assumptions was to simplify the design or to make the concept easier to understand. Okay. So, the these th that's the reason that I use those assumptions. Okay. So, now we're going to go ahead and consider how the efficiency affects the design and how to compensate. Okay. Now, the first one that I'm going to talk is uh, duty cycle. Okay. Now, like I said, I, I assumed that the duty cycle was 0 0.5. Okay. Now, and that was to simplify the concept. Okay. But let's examine that. If you look at uh, a data sheet of a PWM, in this case, I uh, let's say I picked up this uh, PWM uh, UC 1844, and if you look at the data sheet. Uh, you will see that this is the current mode PWM okay and there is a section in there where it says PWM section and if you notice here it says maximum duty cycle and if you look in here for the 40, 1844 it has a minimum and a maximum and it has a typical now if you notice there's a range it goes the maximum that it can go is 50%, but the minimum is this 46%. Okay, so in reality, in real world, this is the number that you're going to be using 46%, not the 50%, but the 40%. Okay, this is an actual real, and so in this case, the PWM can vary anywhere from 46 to 50, but if you're going to do a worst case design this is the number that you want to use okay so basically in reality most current modes cannot achieve 50 percent you have to look at the data sheet of the PWM, PWM that you will uh, use okay. okay 
and in this case the UC 1844 has a minimum duty cycle of 46 percent so in this example I would use 46 if you're using a different chip make sure that you look up what is the minimum duty cycle that you can use and that's the, the, the duty cycle that you will use okay now the other assumption that we have made is that we assume that the efficiency is a hundred percent and we did this because we assume we're using ideal components now in real world applications there are no ideal components most components or I should say rather all components have some kind of power losses MOSFETs have power losses because of the RDS on the diodes have power losses conductive losses even the transformer have conduct uh, losses uh, because of the resistance of the wire and also proximity losses and uh, and core losses even capacitors have losses due to the ESR or the equivalent series resistor that are uh, in series with them okay now when we're talking about efficiency well what is efficiency well efficiency is really defined by the uh, power output divided by the power input times 100 percent so basically that's what efficiency is so basically it's a measurement of uh, or a ratio of your output power versus your input power okay now typically and I guess this is a little bit of hand waving okay flybacks can have an efficiency range from 70 percent to 80 percent uh, 90 percent okay so that's kind of the range that uh, I've observed on some of the most uh, I'm pretty sure that this may be able to go up if you use very uh, very good components uh, but uh, that's the range that I've seen in, in real world applications or at least the ones that we've used uh, that we've designed now when you're talking about efficiency what you're really talking is power losses okay now where do these power losses come from okay so let's take a look at the schematic okay well like I said before the resistors or actually the the windings uh, the primary they actually have resistance those dissipate uh, power okay so you have power dissipated in the primary and then you have another resistance in series with the secondary that also has power losses and then there's also uh, power losses associated from the core okay I haven't talked much about it but there are power losses in there okay then you have power losses or when the diode is connected so you have power losses there and then also have power losses due to the ESR what do you think uh, ES, uh, capacitor warms up well it's because you have a, a ripple current going through here and this resistor heats up which is internal to the capacitor and warms up the capacitor so those are losses okay and the power losses or actually the power output is the power that is dissipated by the load Okay, so the input power would be this power plus all of these other power losses. Another source of power losses uh, from the MOSFET, uh, I've actually breadboard this flyback and I've used a not a very good MOSFET, uh, but the MOSFET that I'm using has about 2 ohms. Uh, of resistance it has an RDS on about 2 and I'm using a current sense resistor of about 1 ohm so in reality from ground to this point to the drain I have about 3 amps okay and in the design we had calculated that we had a peak current of 1 amp 
So that means if you have one ohm here and you have a two ohms here, you're going to have three volts drop. Basically, it's one amp times three ohms. You're going to have three volts here. Okay? And if you put 24 volts here, in reality, instead of having a V minimum of 24 volts, you don't have that no more. Your minimum now is actually 24 volts minus 3 volts. So you actually really have 21 volts. So that would be your minimum. Okay. So you have to compensate for that. So these are the losses that uh, are associated. And I also forgot to mention when you put a snubber to snub the ringing, that also consumes power. And you can also put a snubber across this diode to help reduce its power dissipation. And that also reduces or consumes power. Okay. And then you also even have power losses due to your PWM, uh, the UC1844 I think consumes about 24 milliamps at 12 volts so that's 288 milliwatts of power. Okay, So to account for the power losses you can assume a N of 80 percent. Why 80 percent? Well it's kind of the middle of the range and that's a pretty good number and once you built it then you can adjust that but 80% would be a good good number to start so let's go ahead and put everything together in other words everything together in regards that now we're uh, putting efficiency and that we're also using a duty cycle that's uh, more realistic okay so here we have the original design example. The original design example uh, stated that it, we had a VN from 24 volts to 34 volts, okay, and V out of 12 volts at half an amp, and a frequency of 100 kilohertz, okay. Now this is what's different, okay. Uh, remember, uh, in the first uh, part one, I use a duty cycle of 0.5 and an efficiency of 100%. Okay, so now we're making the changes to account for real world characteristics and for the power losses. Okay, so now we're going to use 0.46 and 0.8. So how does that affect the design? Okay, let's let's see how it works out. So the power output is 12 volts. Uh, times half an amp, so we know that it's six watts. Okay, and this is where it changes a little bit. I had said that the power, since power was 100% efficiency, power input was equal to power output. But in this case, since we have an assuming an efficiency of 80%, we can use this equation. Okay, and when you solve for PN or P input we see that it's P out divided by the efficiency. So when you put the math or plug in the numbers, uh, originally we had 6 watts. Now we have an input power of 7 watts. Okay. Then the third step that we use, uh, we use this uh, power input and we divided it by the minimum input voltage and that will give us our input average in this case I got 312 milliamps okay so once we have that we want to know or we want to calculate what the input peak current is okay plug that up here which is the input uh, average and this is a constant it's not the duty cycle it's 0 0.5 and here is the duty cycle so in this case it's 0.46 Okay, that's the duty cycle that we're using from the UC1844. Uh, so now we end up with a peak current of 1.35. Okay. Uh, and then the next step is to calculate T on. And T on is defined as the time that the MOSFET is turned on. 
and that is uh, duty cycle. Again, here's a new number, 0.46, divided by 100 kilohertz, which is what uh, we had set. So T on is 4.6 microsecond. Okay. So now we can calculate the new primary inductance. Okay. So basically, it's V in times T on divided by the input peak current. So in this case, we get 24 volts times 4.6 microseconds and divided by 1.35 amps, we end up with one no 86.7 microhenry. Okay. So this is the the actual inductance value that I will be striving to achieve when I wind my transformer. Hopefully in the next video I'll show you how I uh, wind my transformer, how I test it, how I measure the, the leakage inductance, and then model it, and then put it in my uh, uh, prototype and then compare the measurements. Now, remind you that this is the new uh, primary inductance. Okay, the O was a hundred and twenty microhenry. Okay, so as you can see, the inductance decrease, and this was, and this design value was when we assume a duty cycle of fifty percent, and then an efficiency. Sorry, 100%. Okay, so now by using real world or actual numbers, in this case a duty cycle of, of 0.46 and an efficiency of 80%, we end up with a slightly lower inductance. Okay, so in the next video, hopefully, I'll show some actual lab video from my lab. I'll try to show how I wind uh, the transformer uh, and by no means am I an expert but I do have access to expert uh, transformer designers so I might interview him and uh, and have him give us some pointers on how to wind a uh, transformer. Thank you for watching. See you soon.